So I've now got my Kineva SL all hoped up. So I've had the hope calipers, put the hope rotor on. So it's a six bolt, 220 mil on the front. And then because of the DT Swiss 27.5 uh, wheel I bought, this was in sensor lock, it's the only one I could find, so that's 200mm sensor lock. And now I'm in the process of do, 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 putting hopes on the Levo, so replacing the sensor lines with the hopes. And then I have got for the front, the because I'm running the V4s, I've got the V4 specific rotor, so this is 220mm. It's a lot heavier. So with the trusty kitchen scales, set to Zicho. Put the rotor in the middle. 288 grams, God, feels lighter than that when you're holding it. But yeah, 288 grams for the 220mm V4 vented rotor. So we'll see how that compares to the very, very basic bog standard center line. So turn on the trusty scales. I reckon this is going to be a lot lighter actually. Was it 288? And the center line is. Okay, so considering you've got like the floating parts on the Hope and the fact this is just one single piece, then you know that, that grammage difference isn't too bad actually. So it's slightly heavier, but we're talking marginally. But as you can see, it's two pieces. Well, it's one piece that's cut out, I can't work it out yet, um, yeah one piece so it's got these vents in between, I think it's 2.3 mil width, you know standard rotors are between 1.8 and 2 generally and I think this is a 2.3 or 2.4 width, so that's going to give extra uh, fade resistance and uh, braking performance for the heavier Levo, so um, yeah. I love fitting pad uh, discs, me, because um, it's such an easy job with hopes. You don't have to prat around with the pistons at all. Uh, that's sarcasm because you do. I, I do love them, but they just uh, they're a pain in the in the backside to initially get set up. But once I set up, they're pretty good. Uh, pretty good brakes. So, <clears throat> yep, I'm gonna get these uh, fitted now. So with the rear rear one fit, I'm glad I went for that little um, the sensor in blue. Because I've gone for obviously the blue road, so we've got the blue hubs looking quite nice, all matches. And um, yeah, it's quite cool because you can't really tell the sensors there, it kind of just blends in with the um, rest of the bolts. Um, so, yeah, you get all kinds of ferrous stuff, brake dust, and all sorts of stuck to the magnet, which is a pain you need to clean once in a while. But yeah, that's the 200 mil rear all done and on. Right now, trying it on the bike, and uh, all lovely lined up. A little bit of rub, but I give up. I've got everything square, pads in square. I actually think the road has got a slight little buckle to it. I just I think I've ever received a road that hasn't had a slight little, uh, slight little wobble on it. But the new pads, new road, it's only just catching. It's not stopping the wheel, so I think um, it's as close as I'm going to get without spending hours of fettling and Look at the thickness distance difference. If I can get both in, oh, it's stuck to the magnet. Uh, if I can get both in focus. I should have really done this with it off the bike, but. Yeah, it's quite a bit thicker. So, uh, wish me luck, because, like I said, this is not going to be an enjoyable task. It never is. But, uh, I think you have to do if you want better braking. So, whilst, uh, been spending the past few nights working on the bike, putting the rotors on and things like that. We had an unwanted visitor in the garage. Now I think that might have been after one of my bikes, probably my e-bike, but I caught the little bugger. Here he is, aren't you? Causing trouble. So I caught this little field mouse. So yeah, he's been uh, dropping his poos everywhere. So obviously I don't have to chew through cables, so uh there he is, little field mouse, bless him. So yes, you're not allowed to have one of my bicycles. So we're gonna go and uh, drive a mile away from the house and release him. So, uh, and then once I've done that, I'll get back to uh, fitting the uh, V4 specific vented rotor. And uh, I've got the 200 mil 
200 mil post to 220 mil adapter to put on there. So with the mouse capade last night, I kind of timed out um, doing the rotors because it turns out we've got three mice. I've managed to catch two of them. The trap's out. Hopefully, catch the last one tonight. They keep triggering the light and alarm system in the garage, um, so I can then see them on the camera up there. So anyway, back to the bike. So I've got the V4 rotor fitted tonight. Um, this is obviously the V4 specific one, so it's the thicker a rotor and it was an absolute pain in the ass to fit not to bolt on um one it was to line up with the actual caliper so your caliper's got like a little gap like a channel at the top and the bottom and this thing is so close to touching either side and actually catching on the metal then with it having new pads and the new rotor which none of it's really worn down there is literally, because of the thickness of the pads and the thickness of the rotor, there's literally no gap for the pistons to move. They're literally moving up by about a hair, a hair, hair's width. So yes, surprise, surprise, it is rubbing quite badly, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fix that. They're hard enough with the standard thickness rotor and slightly worn pads. So with it being brand new and brand new, I'm just gonna cope with the with the, with the rubbing and catching. Um, bedded it in down the street. You can see you've got some nice groovage going on on it. So there we go, so we've got 220mm rotor at the front with the V4 uh, caliper and obviously the purple pads in and then at the back so we've got the standard 200mm rotor, so I think that's 1.8 So thanks for watching, I hope you found this of use and uh, yeah, message if you've got any questions about this pig of a rotor <laughs>